from early morning I could see the sardines being smashed in front of Hibberdeen and further down south. We arrived at Hibberdeen Beach and the nets were already on the beach. And of course we made our way to the rocks as soon as possible as you could just see the shark action from early morning already. Chase had a bait in the water already and all the other guys were getting ready while I was doing the live updates to all of you guys so you can know what's happening where. The sardines were full up, right in the back line behind the rocks. You could literally lob a bait into them. One of the boats had difficulty with its outboard and Jace was quickly to jump in to go and assist them. Uh, high five! Jace is right though. Yeah, that's a Okay guys, when that fish I had to tighten up, you saw that it was getting closer to the drum there. And uh, looks like you know, something could have swum in it. Could be a knot pull. If it's a knot pull, the knot broke, Jace will never hear the end of this. He's right. Uh, first time I play with this whole Saltiga 2020 and <laughs> it's got the power, no problem. I managed to stop that fish, but with those big head shakes in the beginning, it popped the knot or popped the braid. Um, everything back on the reel, so he lost the leader. Uh, probably the top shot, a little bit, probably got 20 meters top shot or something on here, I don't know. But uh, that's all that was lost. And that should fall out, because we, we squash all the bulbs on those circle hooks. And it should fall out quickly. But now you see guys, even on top gear, something can fail. So double check the knots, make sure you use the best leader material and braid you can possibly use or afford and uh, proper leaders on that 2 mil, 1.8 mil tapered T-line leader. There we go! Another one! Thank you so much guys! Told you! That's great! Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what happens when you're fishing in a smash guys, you know? There's fish uh, swimming into your line you fighting fish across. Be a long one. Uh, fingers crossed we land it. I've got some good uh, support, some good moral support here, so I'm sure I'm going to land it. Hey, Andre? They used a drone because they were using bigger baits, four, five, six sardines at a time, and getting them to 50 or 80 meters to get to where most of the sardine action was. And 
as these baits were dropped, it was between 3 and 15 minutes, and the guys just went tight. The j 65 pounds diameter and braking capacity exceeds 80 pounds. Yeah guys, so I dropped it, not even, I would say 30 seconds, and I got to pick up. So my drag is quite tight here, because I've got about 500 meters of j 65 pound, full length. So yeah. When hooking these bigger fish, they take their first and sometimes their second run. Leave them a while out there to see which direction they're going. It is important to identify the best possible areas to land these fish beforehand and then start moving your fish in that direction slowly. But letting it swim out on its first and second run allows you to get through the other lines and away from all the other sharks and action that could cut you off. Okay guys, as you can see, Mayhem here at Ibedin with the sards coming up close from early this morning. Uh, sharks with the nets when they netted. Uh, smashing. Jace is in, Dre is in, another guy's in and they tangled unfortunately and then another's in as well. Um, I haven't put a bait out again. I had Jace's rod when he swam to, to help the boat. Uh, but uh, and his rod went but the leader not pulled on that uh, on that fish. But it took it way down to the ground. Some big graves around. Uh, initially there were a lot of uh, jumping sharks, some spinners and uh, back tips. And now the guys are intertwining here. Swing the camera. Andre did a great job of getting out of the crowd and getting his fish to move left. Jace did the same by getting his fish to go right towards a smaller bay on the right hand side. It wasn't long and there were six guys on at the same time. It wouldn't be clever to put more baits out while so many guys are fighting fish. <laughs> Zamba to Ibedin. Long drive, so tight now. And after playing this fish very well, Andre was the first to land a nice dusky of 260 centimeters in excess of 270 kilos on the grinder. Job well done. How's it, guys? So, yeah, I dropped a bait about an hour and a half ago and I got my first grade for the sardine run. Raka! It's actually my second one by the way. So yesterday we fished that splash rock and I got one about 130 kilos. But this is the one that I came for. Yeah. Unfortunately, Jace's got cut off by another angler and most of the fish on the point were lost. When we left, there was only one guy still on. We quickly received news of a pocket stuck in between the rocks at Cracker Bay. And it wasn't possible for us to get there quickly. But through the courtesy of Aloe's resort, they allowed us to park there and we managed to get down to the bay quickly. Five minutes guys! That's how long it took me to land the fish. <laughs> when we arrived there, Jace already landed a spinner shark of over 100 kilos in five minutes. The sharks were wild in the shore break and you can literally choose which one you want to hook by just lobbing a bait in front of them. Unfortunately with all the action and all the sharks swimming around it is not easy to keep them on.
after. Guys, it's absolute mayhem. There's car pushing here. Uh, Moonlight, Team Moonlight, Tony saw them here, discovered them. The sharks are everywhere here in front of us, but there's so much sharks so watching that uh, they swam over my bait ten times already, they haven't picked it up. Uh, a few guys, I think Jason's been on two or three times already. We got here, but they, Ray is, oh, Ray is fighting a fish that side. It's just insane. This is how you should see this body. It's unbelievable. It's real. Oh, there we go. On my bait again. Two of them. Two of them. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Two of them swam over my bait now. We just love it. Uh, I've got a very long leader on. I can't pass it. So you just swing it there on my bait. There's so much sarge here that I don't think you can even pick up your bait. So let's hope. Let's hope. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh. Doesn't take the hook, it takes a spot. Didn't take the whole bunch. Let's see now, let's see now. Take it, take it. There we go. Again, I get a little tuck. I think they're pulling the swords one by one off my hook. See worse. <laughs> Two of them on top of my bike. And there's just sharks in the back, guys. Right? There's a thick one in front of us. You can cross over the shoulder, that's how close. Oh, there we go, he's on. My best fishing days. I'm just having a blast. Uh, flicking baits with no sinker, 10 meters, and just having fun with the public, fellow anglers. It, it is a blast. Guys, if you haven't tried this, do it. I'm gonna get a bike just now. Just watch. The shark swimming to my bait. Ah, it's going past my bait. I uh, probably didn't put enough curry powder. I'll try again. Guys, I'm fishing with a lock drag. I'm packing this thing up. <laughs> He's still taking one. This is full, full drag, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopa, come here! <laughs> full, full drag. Andre, what's that? 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 It went straight. There's a forms an L shape here, the reef in the back. So mine didn't go out of the bay. It took me straight onto that reef. But absolute mayhem, fantastic. Landed all by himself. The second fish of the day, lovely grey of two six seven centimeters. tackle they decided to lock up on this fish completely so that it doesn't get to the back reef and stays in the bay so that he can try and land it as quick as possible he managed to keep the fish pretty much on the lip but this fish was so green that it, it still had the good fight in it for quite some time on the lip
okay for the day. Thanks, Jace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was my second day for the day. And I just love to Did it break off? No. But you straighten the circle of this is a 12 -er. Yeah. That's how yeah, hard so he pulled it. Yeah, so I've got 100 pound J Bray there and I had to lock my drag. Because I drink. Oh, that's, that's nice. That's tough pulling it there, oh. eh? Yeah, but yeah. Because they're green. Because <laughs> each time I grab the brush, they yeah. green, 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 green. And that was, I had like four sardines on the hook, and I just lobbed it, not even two meters. And you hold on. But look at this, guys. This is a tuna circle, and uh, to the end, it was still hooked. It was landed on this hook as it is. Yeah. How's that? Very good, eh? Awesome time. Guys, if you're not here, Let's make your way down here. It's an awesome experience. It's actually my first time on the Stardew Drug and it's something else. It's unbelievable. So, Laka, thanks a lot. Cheers. He managed to land that fish in 35 minutes and the rest of the team moved to Pamula where there was a lot of action. Kumaran was already there and managed to land a reggae and another smaller dusky. Great footage of shoals Apparently a Lifafa with thousands of sharks coming. Have a look at this. Credit to whoever took it. Unfortunately, we don't have the details. Thank you guys for watching. And please remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification button so you can receive updates every time we upload a video. On some of the other beaches, just north of Pamula, you get Governor and Chris Ayers had a lot of fun. Getting a total of four big duskies and you're getting with a lovely tiger shark.